What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool blend where the floor goes from a hexagon tile into a wooden flooring. So I got this image from one of my subscribers, they emailed me the image and they, they said like uh, what do you think about this, can it be done in Revit, how would you do it and I thought it would be a great topic for a tutorial. So if you're interested in, uh, in maybe sending me over an idea for a tutorial you can leave the idea in the, in the comments or maybe email me the image or something like that. So that's what we're going to be uh, exploring in today's tutorial. Now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe, I make useful tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials and also I make Revit courses. Uh, now if you check out my website balkanarctic.com it's going to be the first link in the description of this video. Uh, there I have about beginner courses. So I have a beginner 16 hour beginner to intermediate course. I teach you pretty much everything that you need to know to be able to finish projects on your own. And then also I have numerous advanced uh, courses where I tackle some of the advanced uh, topics in Revit. So check it out if you're interested. Okay, so with that out of the way, without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. Okay, so here I am in uh, Revit and I'm just going to go here to new and then start a new project for the template. I'm going to choose the architectural template and then click OK. So as soon as Revit starts up, we're just going to be placing a simple small floor here in the middle of the screen. So I'm just going to go here to the floor tool and then for the floor type, uh, it defaults to the generic 150 millimeter, uh, but I'm actually going to go with the standard timber wood finish, uh, just because we want to have that wood finish on top, uh, just out of the box, so we can uh, kind of start creating our tile and and then blending the tile with the with the floor, so uh, or with the wood floor. So let's just create a small piece of uh, floor, just like that. Hit finish. There we go. Okay, so once we have this, uh, as you can see, we have this simple floor. If I switch this to uh, perhaps realistic, as you can see here, we have just wood. Uh, uh, wooden floor, wooden flooring. Uh, now in order to change the top layer so it has the uh, uh, just the wood floor finish in some places and tile finish in other places, we have to divide this floor into its layers. Now you can do that by selecting any uh, element in Revit that has layers like walls and floors or roofs and then uh, when you select it go here to the modify tab when it lights up all in green uh, then uh, switch over here to the create tab and then here we have the create part parts tool. Now when you click create parts everything is going to disappear. Now if we go back into the 3D view for example we still have our floor but here in level 1 it, it disappeared. Uh, that's because when you create parts here uh, at the properties panel it's going to have this parts visibility option and it's going to say show parts. Uh, now if you go with show original it's going to show the floor so it's going to exist but if we go to show parts which means individual layers it's not going to uh, show them. Now this is something that I explain in depth in my uh, Revit graphics course which is available on my website balkanarctic.com so check it out if you're interested more about that. The thing is just with the view settings in Revit uh, floors are quite delicate so what you need to do is if you want to see the parts so the individual layers in the floor plan uh, you have to scroll down a little bit go to here to the view range and then uh, set the here the view range uh, uh, bottom or view depth to unlimited, hit apply, OK, and now we can select individual layers. Also here in the 3D view, uh, if we go here to the properties panel, the parts visibility is here set to show original, but if we set it to show parts now, as you can see, these are all individual layers. So if I switch this to realistic, I can select that top wood layer go back here into level of one and then you have the divide parts option. So this allows you to divide the floor or the top finish uh, or the top layer of the floor so it will be tile in one place and then wood in the other. So you just want to go here to divide parts and you have this edit sketch option which will allow you just to use simple lines in order to divide that. So if I just use a couple of lines like this, hit finish, hit finish again 
As you can see now we can select this part of the floor and then this part as well. Now let's select the smaller part, let's say this is where we want to add our tile and then in that part if we go here to the properties panel uh, we have the material by original which means it's going to use the same material as the rest of that layer but of course if you want to use a different material as in this case we want to use tile you can just go here and uncheck that which will allow you to uh, change the material parameter. So you just go here to material, it says oak flooring by default, you go here on this little button and now you can change the material. Now unfortunately by default in Revit we don't really have a material that's a hexagon tile and this doesn't really work with any other uh, type of tile, I think hexagon tile really makes it look really cool. So let's just search for tile and then we don't really have many options. So what they like to do is go here below, go to tile, then see what happens. So here we have this interesting tile pattern, which I really like. And I'm just going to load in that, so that's stone and ceramic, load that in and you have it here. Then I'm going to right click, go to duplicate, and then I'm going to call it this one tile-hex, for example or hexagon tile. Now also before you edit this what you need to do is go here to the appearance tab for that material and click on copy or duplicate this asset. This will allow you to well make a change to this uh, asset or this material without changing the original one which is of course really important. So don't miss this step make sure to click here on duplicate this asset. Okay, now let's change the material image. So what you want to do is here as you can see we have the material image appear in three different places. So here under parameters we have the image and the roughness and we have the same image in both of these and also here for the relief pattern or bump we have the same image uh, just a little bit different to add that bump. So what I'm going to do is just go here for the first one just click on this little link uh, and I'm going to go here to the desktop and here I have a uh, a little uh, image that they found online, so I'm just going to open that up. Now this is just a quick Google search, a Google image, uh, image. <laughs> so uh, that's where I found it. Same thing here, make sure to go to this link, uh, go to the same one, so desktop, this one, and the same thing here, oops, let's escape out of that, yeah, you want to click the link, desktop use the same one. Uh, now here I'm not really concentrating on uh, adjusting the material uh, correctly, here I just want to have something that looks good for just for now and then here let's go to the scene. I like to set it to walls because it makes it a bit easier to see. I, I find it to be a bit better than floor. As you can see it's fairly decent but I think it's a bit too small so let's go down to the image click on the image itself here as you can see it's for 400 by 400 I'm just going to increase that to 1000 by 1000 there we go looks better click here on done uh, same thing here you might want to change oops I change the other image as well, so just for all of these, uh, make sure that it says, oops, okay, that's annoying. And then this one as well, perfect, done, and then this one, okay, this one even has depth, but that's okay. Uh, for some reason it's not doing it automatically, which is really annoying. There we go. Okay, click done, apply, okay, and there we go, we have our tile. Now you're probably thinking, okay, okay, as you can see it doesn't look, really look perfect, but that's okay, it works for this quick little demonstration. So how can we now adjust the connection between these two? Well, you can select the original part, the one we, that we kind of separated, go here into edit division, and this will allow you to edit sketch, and now you can edit this sketch. But the problem is, when you zoom in, well, you can't really see the material. Uh, it goes into this weird mode where everything kind of gets selected in the blue, so you can kind of see the material below, but not the actual material, which is annoying. So what you want to do is escape out of this, escape out of that as well, and then go here to the Annotate tab, go to the Detail line, and then by using the Detail line you want to sketch out the lines here. So for example, I'm going to zoom in over here, and then let's use Wide Lines, Turn on the thin lines, 
so that might be a bit too wide. Let's go with medium ones. Medium lines, perfect. And then you can just go like that. So as you can see, it works perfectly. So you can go all the way down along this path. Now I'm not trying really too hard to be that precise. I'm just trying to create something for demonstration purposes, but I think you get the point. So you can just go all the way around, just following those kind of separations in the tiles. You can go all the way around, perhaps here as well. Maybe like that. Perfect. So once you have created something that looks like this, uh, what you can do uh, afterwards is go back, select the original part, maybe turn on 10 lines at this point, select the original part, go into Edit Division, uh, go into Edit Sketch, and now if you go and use the Pick Lines tool, hover over one of these lines and then just hit the Tab key once, it's supposed to select the whole chain. So now you can select the whole chain, it's going to look like that. You go to Trim and Extend and you use Trim and Extend to Corner here and here as well, and that's it. You hit Finish, Finish again, and uh, what, 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 what it's going to do is default the material back to the original, but that's okay. You select it, you go back to Properties, um, Material by Original, uncheck that, and then set this to, let's see, Tile, uh, Hex Tile, and there we go. So as you can see, our edge is perfectly following these tiles. Now, of course, I was doing this really quickly, so it doesn't look perfect, but you get the point how it's done. Also, I'm just going to make a cross selection like this just to select all of these detail lines as I don't need them anymore, and then I can just hit delete. And also, if you switch to the 3D view, it's going to look pretty much the same. So as you can see, it's perfectly following, uh, the, the wood is perfectly following those tiles. So that's how you create this connection between a tile floor and a wooden floor in Revit. Uh, I know it doesn't look perfect, but again, as I said, if you take a little bit of extra time to make sure that everything is really tight and precise, and if you use a nicer image here for the hexagon tiles, I think you can make this look really, really good. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this quick little tutorial. I hope you have learned something new, and I hope this was interesting, kind of showing off the uh, abilities of Revit. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to uh, subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you're interested in some of my uh, more advanced courses, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. Or if you want all of my Revit project files, check out my Patreon. That's going to be uh, the links in the description to my website and to my Patreon. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.